Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. Right, Sunday evening here in Australia. Market back at 2.8 trillion, so that's quite nice. Uh, where to from here is the real question. BTC dominance dropping again just a little bit now, down to 41.5% volume down. But obviously, it's the weekend. That's what generally happens on the weekend, but that doesn't mean nothing uh, makes moves. There's definitely things that makes moves because there's less volume, so it takes less money to do that. Bitcoin price, $61,500 thereabouts, a little bit over $61,660. Gas prices, nice and low. So, God, if you want to do anything on Ethereum at the moment, now's the time. But in saying that, it's still not cheap. I did a couple of transactions and they're about $80 to uh, $70 each. So this is quite misleading. That is probably the price simply to move some Ethereum around. You want to do anything smart contract-wise, throw another zero and some on it is basically where it's work where it's at at the moment all right have a look bit of a, a mixed bag as we can see but look up 1.3 percent so there should be some nice movers and we can see a few in there bnb doing quite nice had a very nice move actually let's have a look is it the biggest mover in the top 100 in the last 24 hours not even close uh Kadena is on an absolute tear, up 45%. It's been flying. Helium making a nice move as well. Loopring doing well. Avalanche, OKB, Nexo. Chili's uh, moving even more again, so very nice. Uh, One Harmony making a nice move. Look, it's to be expected. The market is up, so things are quite green. A couple of really nice movers. I mean, two big movers. I mean... You know, it'd be interesting to see where they go. They're probably likely to have a pretty good retracement in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. But that doesn't mean this is the run done for them. But look, some things have been going up uh, quite nicely. Uh, and again, I just have to say this. If you're really up, just consider taking some profits. Uh, again, I can never offer you financial advice. I would just hate for you to get completely wrecked. Particularly if you've only gotten in in the last sort of few weeks and things like that. Uh, just know that you're coming in at a sort of at a high point. Most things are at all-time highs at the moment, so the chances of a correction happening from here are probably pretty good, and they're going to be pretty hard to deal with. But if you've done your research uh, and you're in some good coins, it'll really just be about holding. But you know, if you only got in in the last couple of weeks, and you don't really have much profits to take. Then I guess you just got to be uh, up for the volatility of crypto. Uh, would be a good way to put it. All right, what's the flip side of the coin then? What hasn't done so well in the last 24 hours? Now we see mana down, sell down, crypto.com. Again, all these coins that you're looking at that are down, they were up just the other day. Literally just the other day, they were all up. So these losses are quite minor. I mean, you know, low single digit uh, losses really. Two coins that are pretty close, three coins that are pretty close to sort of mid single digits and then everything is low. Again, to be expected with a market that is up overall. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Here's this pennant that we put in the other day. Like I said, we're looking at around about sort of 88,000 for Bitcoin to get there in the not too distant future. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to do it overnight. doesn't mean it's just going to have one big rocket all the way up there. But this is the rough sort of target I'd be looking for. And again, this is just simply moving the bottom from down there to the top there. So you do a line, drag it from about where we are now. And you can roughly say, there we go, about $88,000. That's where Bitcoin should be looking to get in the not too distant future. But this is TA. And the one thing I say about TA is it's only good until it's not because it's not always 100% accurate. It's not a sure thing. It's just a guide. Everything's a guide. You've got to take everything uh, in a holistic kind of approach. Again, what's the sentiment? What's happening around the world? Are financial markets doing well? Are they not doing well? All sorts of things. Now, we do need to keep in mind that a 1.2, I think, trillion dollar uh, bill was just passed uh, the US government so the money printer will continue to go burr at the moment so that should push prices up but you know how long will that last I don't know I guess we'll have to wait and see but the thought of Bitcoin at 88,000 uh, is quite appealing to me that's for sure let's move on to some stories all right now here's a story that has me a bit worried. 4% of Americans have quit their jobs after profiting from cryptocurrency investments. I mean this is good but again, this means things are, you know, 
bubbly high at the moment. It's not to say we can't go higher, but also I'd be a little bit worried about the 4%. Have they really made enough to truly retire? A lot of the time people underestimate just how much money they would need to retire. I mean, you know, let's say you're 40 years old and you're making $80,000 a year. You need enough money to make $80,000 a year up until, I don't know, you're 85. So, I mean, that's literally millions and millions of dollars. And then again, that's after tax and all this kind of other stuff. So I'm super happy for these people. I mean, I, I wish everyone could basically do something like that. I wish I had made enough to do that. Unfortunately, I'm way off. But I just hope that they haven't, yeah, again, under estimated how much money they'll need but look even if it's just a couple of years where they can you know have some time off work fair enough but if it means they have to go back to work uh, later and you know they've made things hard for themselves then that won't be good but very impressive that four percent of Americans have been able to you know not have to work at least for a little while but whether that will last we'll have to wait and see and again that just feels kind of topish though it has me worried all right, something else. Square's Cash App generates $1.8 billion in Bitcoin revenue uh, and their BTC profits are up 29% in quarter three. When things just kind of get too bubbly like this, you generally have a correction coming. And I know a lot of people are just planning on, you know, November's going to go crazy and December's going to go crazy. <sighs> Look, I hope so. As I've said before, I really hope so. That'd be great. I'm just not so sure things are going to play out like people are expecting it because the big players don't want it to play out exactly like everybody is expecting it. They will want to throw some kind of spanners uh, in the works. And yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Again, I'm not trying to fight and scare people out of it. Just get get ready for some serious volatility is what I'm saying and look it can be both to the upside because in those last few you know kind of weeks to months of the previous kind of bull runs like you know they still had big massive drops in it like it might go up you know 100% in a couple of days and then you know it can drop like 50 60 70 percent uh, pretty quickly as well and then still start to go back up again like the volatility really does start to get crazy not so much down 50 60 70 percent that's probably a bit much but you can have big 20 30 uh, percent uh, corrections in a matter of 24 hours and the problem is you don't know whether that's the start of the bear market or whether that's just a correction before it keeps going up so buckle in you know get your seatbelt on because if it's going to do what everyone says it's going to do then things are going to get super crazy in the next few weeks i'm just not sold on that being uh what's going to happen again i'm 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 leaning more towards that extended cycle. Uh, that's where my thinking of uh, how far out uh, it's extended, uh, I don't know. And again, it could be completely wrong and tomorrow the market could crash. And just again, the big players, you know, took their profits uh, and then looked to buy back in at the bottom of the next bear market and everybody else gets wrecked. <laughs> Definite possibility. So keep that in mind. But again, never financial advice. All right. Again, something that has me worried. Growing number of US mayors want to be paid in Bitcoin. Now, I don't think they're going to be paid entirely in Bitcoin. But again, this is usually at that kind of peak when things are a bit frothy and everyone's like, yeah, I'm going to get paid in Bitcoin and this and that. And tops usually aren't too far from here. So again, a lot of people are thinking $100,000 Bitcoin, you know, that it's basically guaranteed by sort of, you know, late November or December. I just, yeah. I don't know. I get the feeling like maybe it's going to be less. Maybe we don't even get to sort of 80, 90,000 before, you know, some kind of bear market comes in. Uh, again, I don't want to spread FUD. It's just, yeah, things are frothy at the moment. And I'm just not sure how frothy it'll get because everyone is again expecting it to be so frothy. Uh, you know, markets rarely ever play out how everyone thinks it's going to play out. And that's just the truth. It doesn't want to ma matter what market you're talking about. There's always big players who can get in and know how to manipulate the market and sell early and things like that. So again, be prepared. All right. Plan B predicts a hyperbolic scenario for Bitcoin. So this is bullish. Uh, and again, look, I hope he's right. I'm just not sure. So this is what he's thinking could happen now. He says, I guess we will be above 100,000 
and then we'll be above 135,000 before the end of the year. And then we'll continue to grow upwards towards the stock to flow X SF2 model target of 288,000 or even above. I would not be surprised even to see Q1 in Q2, uh, see in Q1 or Q2 next year prices of 300, 400, half a million dollar Bitcoin. Now that would be unbelievably impressive. Imagine what the altcoins are going to do if Bitcoin does that. I mean, that is going to be right out there. That will be uh, quite spectacular. Uh, hence why I'm not selling my Bitcoin. Look, if Bitcoin gets to, you know, 150,000, I'll probably think about selling a little bit. It really will be a very little bit. I don't plan on really selling too much Bitcoin at all. Uh, timing the markets, it all sounds very easy when everyone talks about it, but it really isn't. But at about 150,000, I'll probably think about selling some. But at 288, 3, 4, 500,000, I'm absolutely selling some. <laughs> 100%. If I haven't already sold some at about 150,000. And again, I am I can handle a bear market. I've been through one. So I don't mind if Bitcoin gets up to 150,000 and then dumps all the way back to sort of 30, 40,000. It's all good. I'll be waiting for it to get back down there and I'll start buying more. <laughs> Simple as that. But definitely at these kind of hundreds of thousands dollar level, I 100% will be taking some profits. Not a whole lot. Again, Bit Bitcoin is my long-term savings plan, but uh, it'd be hard not to sell at those kind of prices. But again, most people think Bitcoin will be a minimum of a million dollars in the next decade. So, you know, you can sell some at 288,000. That'd be pretty good. But remember, you might not buy back in cheaper because it just could keep going. You just never know. Everyone likes to pretend like they think they know exactly where this market's going. But yeah, we will wait and see uh, how smart everybody is. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to tell you, I don't know where it's going. <laughs> uh, I know it's going up over the long term. Uh, exactly how high it go and how low it's going to go, I have no idea. I will just be keeping my eyes glued to the charts uh, and again taking in all the information sentiment you know what the charts are showing you know what's happening happening economically uh, around the globe all sorts of things like that and it's all of that information that I'm going to try and make an assessment about whether it's time to take some profits or again whether I'm just simply going to hold I don't think I'm going to uh, try and hold through a bear market because I just don't know when a bear market's coming. We could go into a super cycle. But there are other things that I'd like to invest in. Uh, particularly, I'd like to get a property uh, and a business. Uh, if I could get those, and look, I'm a long way off uh, getting those at the moment, a real long way. So I would need Bitcoin to go to those, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand dollar levels uh, for me to, you know, even think about doing uh, any of those two things. But look, who knows? I'm in this for the long term. I'm not in it for the short term gains. All right, last but not least. So institutional crypto platform backed. So it's connected with the New York Stock Exchange. Expands services beyond Bitcoin, adding its first altcoin to the roster. So of course, if it's not Bitcoin, what's the first altcoin you're going to add? Ethereum. So now back to coming out to support Ethereum. And again, it does show that there's that institutional uh, want and need for Ethereum. It's not just Bitcoin. But Bitcoin, again, it may not go up as much as the others, but it won't go down anywhere near as much as the others as well. Now, where's Ethereum going to fit in? Is Ethereum going to be more stable? Uh, you know, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Uh, you know, until Ethereum 2.0 really rolls out and, you know, whenever that is and uh, how well it does is really going to decide whether it will be at least close to being as stable as Bitcoin. Not that Bitcoin's all that stable. It has 50% retracements in it. We had one not that long ago. All right, bit of a quick one for me. It is the weekend. Uh, back to work uh, for the week, uh, like most of you, I'm quite sure. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. And I'll see you next time.